Hi, welcome to the bathtub. This is Scott Bradfield, the masturbator. I've been masturbating since I was 12, but I didn't get really good at it till I was 13 or 14. We're, uh, we've been away for a while here at the bathtub. I just, I just kind of, I don't even know how time goes by. You know, we don't go anywhere, we don't do anything. I take baths in the morning and I read. I write stuff nobody, nobody buys and reads. And then uh, I do these talks and I walk the dog. And I still couldn't find time to do these talks. So I'm a couple weeks behind. I'm going to post two of them fairly quickly today and tomorrow just to catch up with my weekly my weekly premise of these things. And uh, today we're going to... I, I wanted to finish talking about the Sot Weed Factor because the last time we talked about it, I only read the first third of it and I wanted to catch up with the end of the book. Uh, it's one of the, it's one of it's possibly Barth's longest novel and it's a lot of fun and it's sort of one of the Barth novels that doesn't get so ridiculously overcomplicated that most people once you get into the language the kind of uh, you know it's a pastiche of 16th 17th century uh, writing once you get into the language it, you you should be okay. Um, we're reading it because we're trying to read our way into letters in which all the characters of the previous Barth novels, including uh, Ebenezer Cook, are characters. I've never read letters, but we're kind of working our way towards it. So before I conclude, I wanted to remind everybody of the International Bathing Alliance, because here at the dwindling days of the American Empire, and in some ways the World Empire, it's, it's kind of a good time to join a pointless organization that doesn't, benefits nobody. It doesn't benefit anybody in the world. It's, it basically, it's free. It's, it's, it's valueless, and it's, a, uh, it's an organization which if you send me your name and a location, I'll put you on a Google map, and I'll say it makes some smart-ass comment, and you will be allowed to permanently, for the rest of eternity, read books in bathtubs anywhere in the known universe. So it's a really great, it's a great opportunity. You can give gift certificates. If you want, I'll even send you a bogus little uh, certificate you can hang on your wall. Um, and I can send it to you and you can just give it to people and you can join other people. All you have to do is write me and say, tub me up, master bather, or tub up my friend, you know, Boris Johnson, who's, who's my bathing buddy. And I'll put anybody you want, I'll put their name on this. Mike Pence, you want to make Mike Pence a bathing buddy? You just don't get in the bathtub with Mike because I'm pretty sure he's got coronavirus. But you can, uh, you can just certainly, you can certainly, um, enroll him in the International Bathing Alliance because we don't require anything except except any nothing we don't require anything we just put your name on the map so uh, that's the pop and it's brought to us by ACMA a, a nebulous shadowy organization that operates at the extremes of our logical uh, our logical uh, thought systems that may not even exist we're not sure it's a pension-esque organization and they basically uh, hate Amazon Jeff Bezos and companies that treat part-time employees like crap such as the Washington Post anyway that's our that's our our that's our product sponsor uh, ep part of the episode. I wanted to f just finish up very quickly with the, the Sot Weed Factor. I read it all the way through for the second time in maybe 30 years. I enjoyed it more the second time. I had a little bit more. Uh, you need to read about 100 pages a day. It's a lot of fun. It's basically a lot of long riffs, and they're all tied up in a long, complicated narrative. It gets more and more complicated as, as the book goes on that involves a real person, Ebenezer Cook. So it's based on this real poet who wrote the first satiric poem in, about America, set in Maryland, where Barth spent most of his life in Maryland. And uh, it's about, they take that premise of this real band and they create a big fictional universe of what America was like then, and all these different opposing forces for, between the, the colonists and the natives and the slaveholders and the slaves and the pirates and the and the people they're pirating, and the and the and the monarchy, and the, and the revolutionaries, and, and and so forth. There's all sorts of the Protestants and the Catholics, and in the midst of all of these warring factions and these different state-sponsored uh, organizations that are all trying to steal property from each other, there's a guy named Henry Burlingame who's a friend of Ebenezer's. He's his tutor when he's young, and this guy is kind of a face shifter so he's constantly dressed up and hiding out and showing up and and he's he plays he, he plays these different characters all through the book and then you find out he was this person or that person and he tells these long complicated stories who apparently is looking for his father and his father was a friend of john smith one of the, the guy who married pocahontas and he's looking through all these documents to try to find it sometimes which 
It turns out he's forged the documents himself. It's a very complicated story. And then there's lots of long riffs that often just dirty joke riffs. There's lots of people standing around in soiled trousers. At one point, I'm, there's at least two or three scenes where it's just um, Ebenezer actually gets so scared, he, he actually takes a dump in his pants, and he's standing in a barn, and while he's standing in the barn, somebody comes in and tells him a story. And there's another one where a bunch of sailors are on a boat, and they all drink water that's bad, and it's just a long fit of you know diarrhea jokes. So the, it's, it's not trying to be a super clever, though it's a super clever book, but it has kind of like Rabelaisian humor. So lots of physical humor, lots of co physical comedy, lots of sex comedy, um, and lots of characters who look like one person and then they turn out to be another person, or who looks like a different person and turns out to be the same person. Everyone is imposters of everybody else. Um, that's the best I can do is summarizing. I will say this, that while I enjoyed the book, I was about five, six hundred pages into it when I put the book down and I picked I, I, I picked it up and I somehow skipped ahead 50 pages and I read for a while. I didn't really even know. I was fine. Because every, every, every 20 or 30 pages wisely, Barth has one of his characters give a quick summary of what's been happening and I didn't realize for at least 20 pages that I had missed this whole section. So I went back and started over again. But still, it sort of gave me a sense that it's um, it is a lot of ser uh, ridiculous comic set pieces. They're funny. They're woven into a really large, complicated narrative. And as with most Barth books, the closer I get to the end, the more I'm sort of feeling like, okay, now he's going to sew everything up. And there's a feeling that everything's being kind of tidied up at the end. And I don't feel that connected to what... I'm not worried about what's going to happen to Ebenezer Cook. Let's put it that way. So anyway, that's my 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 my, we, my my biggest criticism of the book, and probably my uh, my most pleasure out of the book. The pleasure is just kind of being involved in all this narrative shenanigans. I wanted to read a quick passage. There's a there's one passage. Well, I won't read that passage. There's one passage. Again, he just likes to go off on riffs. There's one passage where two women, who are both prostitutes, as I recall, who are yelling at each other, and uh, it goes on for like ten pages where they just they just swear at each other. They're two French. One's French, I think, and the other one's not. And they're both giving each other, they're both yelling at each other and saying horrible things to each other one word at a time. And it gets to the point where we basically have every possible way of calling somebody a cocksucker is basically what they're doing. At one point, again, they're both prostitutes. One calls them, a, a, you're a sausage grinder, you're a nutcracker, you're a vent renter, um, you're a toll hole. I mean, it gets... Uh, it gets more and more ridiculous, but he still seems to come up with kind of clever riffs on, on the same joke. There's a, a passage, I want to read a very brief passage, where Ebenezer, there's lots of long philosophical arguments between these characters that aren't, they are not urgent to the book, but they're fun. And the real premise of the book, and in Barth's universe, is we live in basically in a universe of nonsense. It's a completely... Exist existential universe. There's no meaning in anything. Everything is meaningless. It's a vast Trumpian nightmare that has no reason, no form, no point. So um, what you do in a universe like that is you have to create an identity. Ebenezer creates his identity as a pure man who's never had sex and who's always going to be himself and he's a poet and an artist. And uh, the other guy, Ebenezer Cook, not Ebenezer, Henry Burlingame, he tries to create an identity by finding his father, finding his origin, finding him who, who created him. And uh, that's basically the, the premise of all the uh, Barth books, is you have to create an identity and create a story that's entertaining and create a story that's so complicated and so unusual that it absorbs people who are smart enough to know that it's bullshit. So you know you're being fooled, but you don't care because you're being fooled properly. There's a brief passage here where Burlingame looks around the bar and he says there's two types of people. He says, two things alone can save a man from madness. He indicated the other patrons of the inn. Dull-headedness is one. You know, just look at a Trump rally. Dull-headedness is one, and far the commoner, the truth, or, or watch people staring at MSNBC all day. 
The truth that derives men mad must be sought for ere it's found, and it eludes the doltish or myopic hunter. But once tis caught and looked on, whether by insight or instruction, the captor's sole expedient is to force his will upon it ere it work his ruin. A, a very briefly, he's saying you've got to go through you go through life, and you either just ignore the stupidity of it all, or you try to create a truth that you can believe in and you can that gets you through the day. And that's basically what a, a Barth novel is: is finding a story that'll get you through the day. Okay, I sometimes feel like that's a little overly clever and a little bit, a little bit meretricious. But at the same time, he does do really good, fun, ridiculous stories. And and this is one I would suggest you you try if you haven't tried the others. We'll eventually we'll go to Chimera eventually, and then we'll move on to Letters sometime before uh, the total collapse of the universe. Okay, stay safe. I'm going to do one more of these and get it out tomorrow. I want to do one of my my special spooktacular ha Halloween spooktacular edition is coming up. All right, stay safe. Uh, happy bathing. Join the International Bathing Alliance. There's not there's not much time left in the universe. Join it now, at, or or just or just drift off at your peril. Bye. <laughs>